For all you Toyota Tundra hybrid haters out there, for all you Toyota Tundra hybrid detractors out there, and I'm one of them, I'm here to tell you we're wrong. And the Ford F-150 EcoBoost proves it. Well, good afternoon everybody. How y'all doing? Pretty good here and welcome to the channel. You heard me right. The new 2020 or 2021 Toyota Tundra Hybrid is going to be a success. And the proof is the Ford F-150 EcoBoost. I'm going to tell you why I believe that to be true. First of all, let's talk for a second or two about the Ford F-150 EcoBoost. It was introduced in 2011 as a V6 3.5 liter twin turbo engine. A new thing for Ford. They took a leap. They took a leap because they had to. They had to increase fuel economy and they had to meet the government's cafe standards. Now, what they were trying to do, they weren't looking to replace the V8 necessarily. They were just looking to put another product out there to satisfy what they had to satisfy. So what they came up with, the EcoBoost, had 365 horsepower, 420 pound-feet of torque, and it got, or gets, 16 miles per gallon in the city and 22 miles per gallon on the highway. That was in 2011 when they introduced it. I believe those fuel efficiency numbers are a little bit better now. Now, just as a comparison, back in 2011, the Tundra had 300 has 381 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque, and it got 14 miles per gallon city and 18 on the highway. Now, it hasn't changed. It's still the same. So Toyota is faced with the same dilemma, right? They have to meet these standards. They have to compete. I mean, let's face it. Toyota can't sit back and rest on their laurels, right? Eventually, these other manufacturers are gonna be so far ahead in fuel economy and in power and torque, the Toyota's gonna to be left in the dust. They have to act. Now, this rumored Tundra that's supposed to be coming out, and keep in mind, these are rumors all over the place. They're saying it's going to be a twin turbo hybrid, potentially having electric motors. I don't know. They say that it's going to come out somewhere late 2020, 2021, something like that. And it's going to have 450 horsepower, awesome, 500 pound-feet of torque, what? And miles per gallon of 30 plus. That'll be a game changer. They'll be looking back at Ford and Chevy and everybody else at that point. Be interesting to see what those guys do to try to compete. Now, again, it's not saying that Toyota is going to completely get rid of their iForce V8, but what's happened with Ford in May of this year, Ford announced that they were scaling back production on their Coyote V8, you know, their regular giant V8 motor, because of lack of demand. Demand is dwindling. People want the EcoBoost. All those haters and detractors, and you know there were many, right? Ford's number one. They were number one. You can imagine the uproar when Ford came out with uh, this EcoBoost six-cylinder twin turbo in their track. People went nuts. Almost the same as what the Toyota faithful are doing now. So let's talk a little bit about the issues with the EcoBoost. Some of the things that were being experienced when it first came out because let's face it, this is gonna be something new or new-ish for Toyota and we might experience some of these things. Although one would hope that Toyota has done their research and engineered these things out. Certainly they have. Number one, condensation in the intercooler. Some trucks may have exhibited a stumble or misfire in hard acceleration. Two, a buck or jerk at steady cruising speeds with the transmission in sixth gear. Number three, timing chain wear if the oil change intervals were not followed. And I believe that's still a problem today. If you don't follow those oil change recommendations in the F-150 EcoBoost, your timing chain can actually stretch. And you know, that's not a good thing. Next up, ignition issues and misfires. That's right, I turned the page. I have notes. Lastly, Number five, blue or white exhaust smoke while driving after extended idle. All little things that were experienced back in 2011 when this 
EcoBoost motor first came out. Now, there were some consumer complaints as well. Now, there were 10 of those, or at least the top 10 that I'm gonna give you guys, things that the actual customers experienced. And you know this happens, right? I mean, they can do all their testing and, and all that good stuff, but until these trucks get out there in the real world and real people drive them, you never know. Number one, engine almost stalls when accelerating. I'd say that was probably a lag. Number two, engine grind at startup. That's gotta be disheartening, especially with a brand new motor, right? Number three, engine stalls or dies while driving. Well, that kind of defeats the whole purpose. I mean, if you can walk faster than your truck will go, you don't need the truck. Uh, let's see, number four, engine light comes on. I think that's kind of related to all the rest. I mean, if there's a major problem or any problem, yeah, check engine light's probably gonna come on. Engine runs rough, number six. Uh, probably an idle issue. Uh, number seven, engine misfire. Not a good thing. Number eight, heavy vibration when decelerating. Now, I have experienced that, or had experienced it, in some of the trucks that I've had in the past. Not necessarily F the F-150, but that's where you're driving along, you go to hit the brakes, and you get this shuddery, weird feeling. Uh, number nine, hydro locking. Uh, this I've got to think is probably due to off-roading, right? You know, you get some over, over excited people out there who decide they're going to go through some water that's maybe too deep because it's off-road, right? And you get a little water sucked into the motor. Probably not Ford's fault. Lastly, fuel injector leak. Last thing you want to happen is to have your fuel injectors leak. That could cause a fire, I think. Who knows? So. Will a new hybrid Tundra succeed using the F-150 EcoBoost as a benchmark or as a comparison? Well, I think absolutely yes. And I'll point again to Ford's announcement in May that they're reducing production on their V8 motors due to lack of demand. People want the EcoBoost. And also, um, Ford in 2016, just five years, after the first EcoBoost came out, they surpassed the one million truck sold mark. Obviously, people wanted them. I mean, people still could have bought the V8, right? I mean, it was more money, but people opted for the EcoBoost. They didn't go for the V8. So, bottom line here, is it gonna succeed? Well, I think absolutely. I think in the beginning, like right now, you've got all the purists out there, complaining and crying because Toyota's gonna put a V6 twin turbo potentially hybrid, you know, with electric motors in the truck and they just don't wanna see that. They're fearful for some reason that I was one of them. Don't get me wrong, I'm with you guys. Fearful that the truck is not gonna be all it could be, right? That V8 signifies power and torque, pulling and hauling ability. And we're thinking that maybe that hybrid's gonna fall short. And I think again that the, the Ford EcoBoost is proof that that's not necessarily true. I mean, think about it. If you could go out and get the same truck for pretty close to the same money with 450 horsepower, 500 pound feet of torque and 30 miles per gallon, why would you buy a V8? I wouldn't buy a V8. Now the one last thing I'll mention is Toyota has to meet these rumored requirements, I think. They are so widespread and so widely reported that the consumer, you, me, we expect this brand new redesigned Tundra to meet these requirements. It's almost like it's gospel now, right? It's out there, we keep hearing it, it must be true. And if Toyota puts out a truck that falls short of these specs, if they don't hit that 450 horsepower and that 500 pound-feet of torque, we're going to see that as a failure. It's going to be a big black mark on Toyota. They couldn't do it. They said they were going to do it, even though they may never have said they were going to do it. But since the rumors are so pervasive out there, we just assume that they did say they were going to do it. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Given what I've said and what Toyota is promising, or at least what we, we hope they're promising, would you buy this new Toyota Tundra, this redesigned power horse, even though it's a V6 hybrid, potentially electric motored truck?
truck? I'd be curious to know. As usual, appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the web. Have a great day. Bye.